you're new to brewing, it can seem like there's a lot to learn. So much so that it can be hard to figure out what areas to focus on for better beer. Today I'm going to simplify all that and focus on my top 5 tips to instantly improve your beer right now. I'm Trent Musho and this is The Brew Show. Let's brew some kick-ass beer. Improving your beer should be the goal every time you brew. And you might think you need fancy equipment to make better beer, but that's not always the case. Sure, it can make some aspects of your brewing easier, but it won't necessarily improve the beer. Most improvements can be done in your brewing practices. And that's exactly what I'm going to go over today. All these improvements are things you can do right now or in your next brew without needing to buy any expensive gear. But before I jump in to how to improve your beer, please take a second to like this video and consider subscribing for more brewing tips like this. Now. Let's get into it. Number one, managing the temp. I spoke about this one a lot, but it's probably one of the biggest reasons your brew might have some off flavors. Temperature during fermentation greatly impacts the flavor of your beer. If fermented too warm, you have the potential to stress out the yeast and get all kinds of weird tastes like notes of spice, banana, buttered popcorn, and a general twang that can make your home brew stand out if something went wrong. A good goal should be to get your fermenting beer under 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and that means during active fermentation. When your beer ferments, it creates exothermic heat, which is basically a fancy way of saying it gets warmer when it ferments. But we're only talking like five or so degrees here. So aim for a little below 67 to be safe. For most ale yeast, this is a great spot to be. And even some lager yeast can do okay here. But for the most part, you should try to ferment your lager strains below 55 degrees Fahrenheit for the cleanest tasting beer, as lagers don't have much room to hide off flavors. The best way to do this is with a dedicated fermentation chamber, but those can cost quite a lot. The budget way to do this is to put your fermenter in a bigger bucket or pot and fill it with ice water. Then just swap out ice packs every 8-12 to 12 hours to keep it cool. If you have a really, really cold basement, that can work too, but just setting your beer at room temp is often not enough. Of course, this is dependent on yeast strain. Some yeasts perform better at high temps or promote characteristics that might be right for the style of beer you're making. It's a good idea if you're just starting out and you don't have any way to cool down to pick a yeast that doesn't mind the warmer temps. Kvike comes to mind immediately, as it works great at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and up. But there's also some great Belgian strains and Saison yeasts that actually benefit from some heat to get those esters and phenols needed. Number two, up your yeast count. This is one I ignored for years. I thought, well, the yeast company packed it all up, so I should be good to go, right? Wrong. And a lot of time, my beer suffered or slugged through fermentation. The yeast packs are often a jumping off point for you. They contain just enough for you to make a very small beer or a very light beer. If you're trying to brew anything over 1050, you're most likely going to need to pitch more yeast packs or make a yeast starter. Without building up your yeast, you'll have a low cell count, which means the little guys will be working overtime to convert the sugars into alcohol and eventually get stressed and die out. This can lead to an unfinished beer or potential off flavors like sulfur, a nasty meaty aroma, or a general harshness to the beer. Also, your fermentation will go extremely slow which is an increased risk for an infection to take place because the yeast have not established themselves as the dominant microorganism. Luckily, solving for this issue is fairly simple and inexpensive. It starts with buying some DME or dry malt extract. New brewers are probably familiar with LME or liquid malt extract as it makes up your extract beer kit. But DME is pretty much the same thing and it can be used to make a mini beer that you can dump your yeast into to build up the yeast count and give your beer a jump start. Think of it like a pre-game party for your beer. Everybody gets riled up and ready for the big game. It always seemed like such a chore, but it's really so easy. Just use the ratio of 100 grams DME to one liter of water, and you should get about a 1030 to 1040 original gravity. Perfect for a starter. Mix the two together and bring to a boil. Then boil for 10 minutes. Cool down and pour into a sanitized jar or carboy. Then drop in your yeast and cover with some foil. Give it a shake every few hours until the next day when you'll see some fermentation activity letting you know it's ready to go. Yeast starters are a little bit of extra assurance to ease your mind that you'll have enough cells for a healthy fermentation. But I would always consult a yeast cell calculator if you want to be sure. Each yeast company has different cell counts for their packs. This is especially important for those big beers that need all the help they can to ferment properly. If you have any tips for brewing better beer, let me know in the comments. Number three, understanding oxygen's impact. Oxygen is one of those things that can be pretty simple to overlook, and that's why I'm talking about it here. Oxygen plays a major factor into yeast health and the flavor of your beer. 
At the start of fermentation, yeast desperately need oxygen to perform their job. They take in the sugar from the wort, as well as oxygen, to produce the alcohol and CO2 we desire in beer. When there isn't enough oxygen, the yeast will become stressed and die, creating again more off flavors in your brew. Even low-do brewers, or low-dissolve oxygen brewers, still oxygenate their wort prior to pitching yeast. The yeast simply won't survive without it. The more expensive option to fix this is to buy an oxygen tank and diffusion stone to directly inject oxygen into your wort prior to pitching. But you don't need to drop that kind of cash on a home brewing scale. Roughly transferring and splashing your beer from the kettle and a good 60 second shake while in the fermenter is plenty to get oxygen into your wort. That's what you should be doing at the very least for each brew. Anything beyond that is gravy on top and not required unless you're making a really strong ale about 1070 or above. And even then, I just say shake longer. Now once fermentation is underway, it's the complete opposite story. You don't want any oxygen touching your beer once the yeast are doing their thing. Any oxygen introduced moving forward will risk oxidation, which is basically death to your beer. Maybe that's a little bit dramatic, but it greatly impacts the flavor, aroma, and color of your beer. Oxidized beer has a cardboard-like flavor, can be overly sweet, and have an immensely reduced hop character. Avoid any oxygen contact possible. Avoid auto siphons if you can. Remember, spigots are your friend. And avoid opening or shaking the fermenter needlessly. Ideally, when your beer is done fermenting, it goes straight into bottles or keg via a single line of tubing. And if you can, purge the oxygen out of the bottles or keg with CO2 so that you're not falling short of the finish line. If you don't have access to a CO2 tank, then just go slow and try not to splash the beer too much. Also, if you have any other questions related to brewing, you can always ask me in the comments and on Instagram, at The Brew Show. Or you can post your questions on The Brew Show Discord server, where there's a ton of knowledgeable, friendly brewers that can help you out. Number four, control your water. Water is the main base for all beer. And whether you want to care about it or not, the minerals in water have an important part in the way your beer tastes. I did a simplified explainer video on water chemistry, and if you haven't, be sure to check that out. It'll give you the basic understanding of water to get you started on making the proper adjustments for better beer. But to quickly cover it, depending on where you get your water, it will have varying levels of key minerals that impact the taste and mouthfeel of your beer. Without adjusting these, you're missing out on the extra lever that allows you to have more control over the final beer. For years, I ignored water adjustments. But when I finally sat down and got a basic knowledge and then applied that to my beer, it improved leaps and bounds. I can't emphasize enough how much water chemistry can make a big difference in your beer. And you only need a few inexpensive water salts to start making that change today. Epsom salt, gypsum, and calcium chloride. I'll leave it there for now, but go check out my water chem video for more info. Number five, try going all grain or even partial mash. This might be the one tip that can cost you the most up front, but it will also definitely give you the biggest improvement on your beer. Brewing all grain gives you the power to tweak your recipes to your taste buds and make the exact beer that you like. You can only get so far in extract beer, and most of the time you don't really know what you're getting or how fresh the ingredients are. Brewing all grain gets you to the raw ingredient of malt, and you can really get experimenting with different flavor combinations. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get started with all grain. Brewing a bag, which is how I brew, only needs a kettle, a way to heat the kettle, and a mesh grain bag. You can find inexpensive kettles on Craigslist or even on sale at your grocery store, and the mesh bag is around 15 bucks. If you don't have a propane burner, then you can always do it on your stove top. And if you don't want to buy a new kettle, then you can always start with small batches using the largest stock pot on your stove top. All grain is really not complicated, but if you're a bit nervous about diving in, then I recommend trying to partial mash. That's when the main part of your wort comes from extract, but a portion of the wort is flavored with specialty malts that you do a mini mash with in a small pot. That will allow you to dip your toes in and see that it's not difficult at all. If you want to know even more about all grain or brew in a bag, I have videos for each of them, and I recommend you checking them out for more in-depth info. I promise you, you won't be disappointed in how much better your beer will be. Those are my top five tips. Try them out and let me know if they work for you. But probably the best way to improve your beer is just to keep brewing. At first, you're bound to brew some bad batches, but don't let that get you down. Learn from your mistakes, write down the changes for next time, and brew again. I swear if you stick with it, you'll make amazing beer. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest that's happening on The Brew Show. Happy brewing, and cheers.